Egunon, good morning, buenos días a todos. Good morning, it is a great pleasure and an honor to be here with you today to talk about dual vets in Spain. Maybe the title on the program can be misleading because there we talk about the ministry, but the ministry, I mean, represents the whole country, Spain as a whole. So I would like to start by saying that it is true that we come from many different places, and that is why. Please let me start by giving you some background about our origins, which is the current situation today, and then I will be talking about the future and about the future evolution for dual vets in Spain. So please let me tell you about the past, about our history in Spain. It is true that many of you know about it, so I apologize because many of you know very well where we are coming from, but we have to start by or from the law coming from the year 1990. This organic law was the beginning. Why is it so? Why was this law so important in 1990? because at that point different measures were adopted that then we're going to be having some continuity into the future until today. As you can see there on the screen, there are three measures which are essential and they are in red. First of all, the vocational training degrees based upon the activities of the production sectors for the very first time together with the institutionalization of training in working places but also with the training in these companies we see how for the first time there is a connection between the education world and the business world. Training and the labor market joining forces and joining hands together. Also in this law, for the first time, there was a catalog with different vet degrees. Up to 140 are integrated here and also they are grouped into different families or groups with 22 different families or groups. That is why this law from 1990 has been very important for us so as to know where we are coming coming from and where are we heading to. Another milestone when we talk about the vet comes in the low for VET, and uh, this is a regulation which was very important. This was low five from the year 2002. And it is true that uh, what had been adopted in Lisbon and in the different European states was taken into account. We were talking about how important it was to be able to reply to an essential goal, being able to reply to the different modifications in production centers in the light of the globalization process. The important of this law is because we start talking about identifying that partnership among all the different stakeholders involved. On the one hand, social agents, chambers of commerce, public administrations, teaching centers, teachers, mentors, students. So this is very important as a starting point. And which is the third milestone I would like to talk about, organic law two from the year 2006. And at this point, we start talking about the most important characteristics of vocational training. So I said that in the beginning, we had some 22 different families of groups now we have 26 professional families and there are new degrees taken into account. There is also there are also profiles which are much more clearly established according to the law I referred to before. Something essential too is that vocational training has to be 2,000 hours of training and also we strengthen the relationship between the production sector, businesses and teaching schools because we start talking about this idea of workplace learning, its importance in all the degrees and the length of the studies is going to be the same. Then there are also different guidelines and uh, Ms. Bachner 
Ireland has already also been talking about what the European Commission is doing. Professional modules have to be drafted in terms of uh, learning results. We have been talking about how important it is to know that learning is going to be very important in its dual approach. Also, the Commissioner, Ms. Tyson, was also talking about that. And third, I would like to say that different equivalences are adopted between professional modules and uh, otherwise there is a symbiosis, a synchronicity between the what is being studied in the professional modules and then what the student is going to be developing in the labor market in his job. These are this is the back. This is a little bit the background. And the last milestone is Royal Degree 1529 from the year 2012, where we develop contracts for training and apprenticeship. Here, for the very first time, we are going to talk, we are going to be defining what is dual VET. Then different modalities are going to be taken into account how to implement all that, and which is going to be the framework to develop these different dual VET projects within the education sector. Among these different projects in terms of dual VET that the different regions have been adopting, adapting that to their specificities in the different regions. And I would like to say thank you to the Basque Country because it is a benchmark in terms of dual VET in Spain. Yes, it is at this point when this model started being implemented. But this spirit of cooperation is something that I would like to highlight because since this royal decree was adopted in the year 2012, when the first dual VET project started being implemented, this has been been essential to reach the situation where we are today. So as I said before, within dual VET projects already take into account the collaboration agreement between companies and uh, teaching centers. 33% is going to be as a minimum the training cycle within companies. This uh, cycle is being, it can be enlarged up to three years before it was only two years. And just as the training cycle in companies, now it's 33%, but it was only 22% in the past. And students, before they need to get trained within the training cycle at school, so that later on, what he's going to be doing in the company can be done much more efficiently. And then there was a modification in the year 20, 2013, two important modifications. First, in terms of the education system in Spain, there is a definition about what are we talking about? We have a framework where we speak in the same terms and we understand what this dual VT system is in Spain and which are the conditions and the basic requirements that have to be fulfilled and developed. Maybe for those of you coming from other countries, or from foreign countries in the European Union, it is true that, as the regional minister has said, even if we still have a long way to do, we have already obtained very good results. And our students coming from these apprenticeships and from this training, they reach the market much, much sooner. We have a, a young system because we are talking about, uh, you know, very recent milestones. So I insist we still have a lot to do, but I think that uh, we are joining forces and I am sure that we are going to be successful. So with the modification established in the year 2013, one of the essential goals that we wanted to obtain, and I think that that is being reached, is that 
We wanted to prepare our young people so that they could reach the labor market and start working. And data figures show that we are on the right pathway. And we also needed the co-responsibility of companies. Without their support, it will be very difficult to develop a good dual system. And if we don't have that connection with the production sector and with businesses and with companies, we will fail. In Spain, you know that we have a productive sector where SMEs are very important. Even micro SMEs play a very important role. So cooperation, synergies, and understanding in the different sectors, the generation of clusters is something essential. If we want to be successful, this cannot be neglected because just for one single company, it will be very difficult to cooperate or to have apprentices in this dual system. Even for a student, it will be difficult for him or for her too. But if there are synergies, cooperations, or agreements with other companies, and if there are rotation systems established, things will be easy. That is why the cooperation with the production fabric is essential to develop this dual system. But we cannot forget about how our productive sector is, and then uh, but I think that we are on the right track. That is why within this dual system with which we are going to be working and we are actively participating and working with the different regions within this framework, which is the one that is going to be developed from our ministry, the cooperation of the regions has been essential. I would like to say thank you again to all the different regions. That is essential, but then each region will have to bear in mind the different specificities to develop of the model that better suits and adapts to their regional situation, but always respecting equal opportunities and also the mobility possibilities, both for students as well as for future students. And now, please let me tell you, let me give you some figures about this evolution so that you can see what I was saying before. Even if the vocational training model has been among us since the 1990s, the dual VET system is with us only since the year 2012. But the evolution has been exponential, has been very good, even if figures could be even better. If we take a look at the evolution in terms of schools, teaching centers, when we started in the year 2012, 2013 in Spain, we had 173 different schools collaborating with us. Within this dual modality, we had just established the royal decree, which was regulating the different projects, as I said before. It is true that at, at that point, it was not very clear how that was going to be evolving, and it was difficult to start. So in the year 2015, 15, 2016, sorry, 2016, 2017, 854. So it is a very important leap forward. We need many more than 854. But as you can say, the evolution has been very interesting. Okay, let's talk now about the different companies with which we are working or, co or cooperating. In the beginning, 513, and today, more than 10,000. And we are talking about SMEs and micro SMEs. So to have that cooperation is very important. We still have a lot to do, but as you can see, the approach and the evolution has been very good. Now, in terms of students, we have more and more students, almost 24,000 
in Spain who are being trained in this dual approach and we hope that in the next three or four years we are even going to have many more students. And here I would like to show you the evolution in the different Spanish regions and I would like to highlight that as a general rule both in terms of teaching centers as well as in terms of companies cooperating with us and students there has been a constant increase a constant positive evolution. After having said all this, which is the model we have and where do we want to go to? What do we want to do? Which is the goal? We have seen that since the year 2012, we have been able to evolve and to assess the pros and cons of the different uh, projects to develop dual vet. We have been getting more and more experience. We have have carried out different studies, different assessments, also cooperating with the European Commission. We have been working with them hand in hand, but we have also been analyzing the evolution of dual vet in other countries. We wanted to compare and to learn from their experience. Of course, here in Spain, we need to identify our own model, which replies to our own characteristics, which replies to the characteristics of our labor market. With all this former experience and with the different uh, things that we have been learning and we have been experimenting in the different regions, today we can say or which is the model we want to have and where do we want to head to and which are the objectives for us. So we are elaborating a new royal decree for the education system, for this dual education system. We are working on a new royal decree and I hope that it will be enacted soon. And we have taken into account all the different experiences developed in the different Spanish regions. Second, we also think that something essential for us is to establish dialogue. Dialogue and then information. Information with and about all the different stakeholders. And here I'm talking about uh, trade unions, chambers of commerce, the different Spanish regions, foundations such as Bankia or Best German Foundation, which are also collaborating in the organization of this seminar, teachers and all the different stakeholders, because we all have to work hand in hand. If we insist on establishing a model just for the ministry, that won't be taking us anywhere. We need to have that dialogue. We don't like that model. We want cooperation. We want to join hands. If you have any contribution to make, you know you can do it. We have also been learning from the experience of other countries, from other European countries. And to complement what Dana Karma was saying, we have taken into account three basic things. First, the midterm objectives established in the Riga Summit in the year 2005 and specifically the promotion of apprenticeship of workplace learning. Workplace learning is something essential for us. This seems to be obvious. We have already been talking about it a lot, but it is true that in the past that was not so. Degrees on the one hand, capacity building or skills on the other hand, but then that was not implemented into workplaces. So workplace learning is essential. Entrepreneurs, we say sometimes that they cannot identify the professionals they need, and then on the other hand there are many students 
students may unemployed people. And I think that a dual training will make it possible to overcome this situation. As we have seen, the highest employability rates are among this group of dual training students. So that is the way forward. We need to keep on promoting this approach. And also from the European Union, the strategy 2020 is there. Spain is cooperating there too. And we are trying to develop that apprenticeship approach, also about cooperating with SMEs, which is another strategy, another objective within a strategy. And this is something essential, bearing in mind the characteristics of our productive sector. And last but not least, we are also working in the consulting committee of VET, where different essential goals have been established linked to dual learning, but also trying to establish models which are efficient and have great quality. We don't want just any model. As I said before, it is essential to have the participation, the engagement, and the contribution coming from all the different stakeholders. Once again, it is true that we won't be able to please everybody, but we need to try and reach the maximum consensus, be efficient to try and link companies, the labor market, and the education world. Education and labor have to be connected. Our students need or should be able to get trained, become specialized, get skilled, finish their studies, and start working immediately. That is the objective for us. And last, I would like uh, to tell you a bit more about the areas that will be regulated by this new royal decree. First of all, we want to establish, we want to define what dual vocational training is, even if that was already established in the year 2012. We want to define it much more clearly, identify which are the goals for this dual training who are the stakeholders, the essential stakeholders in this approach, which are the responsibilities for each of them, for each party. And also, we need accountability from those parties. Also, we need an engagement, a clear engagement between the education centers and companies to make this possible. If that engagement, if the compromise is not there, the model will fail, students will be frustrated, and uh, this won't be positive for companies. All these stakeholders need to be engaged and need to be accountable. We also need to talk about the conditions for the development of this training and be clear, each of us should know about which is or what is the role that we have to be playing, how are we going to be distributing time, safety, conditions, etc., etc., which are the characteristics or the mechanisms that we have to establish so that this can be useful also for our SMEs and for our students, and which are the responsibilities also that have to be fulfilled by our students. All this has to be clear. We need to take into account students as students, as apprentices who are going to be in companies, getting trained, are getting skilled, something which will be essential for this student, for this apprentice, for his or her future working life. Two essential things. We need mechanisms so as to guarantee transparency and quality. We want to avoid problems and misunderstandings, and that is why we need to clearly define the obligations of the different parties. And something very important, too, which 
something we talk about it very much, but which is rarely implemented, is assessment and follow-up. We need to monitor the whole system as well as the different projects. Why? Because this is going to be useful to know that our students are really learning, are getting trained, and are getting the right skills. And second, this monitoring process is very important from the external point of view, to know whether the model is successful, whether it's good or not, whether it needs to get adapted or improved, which are also the different modifications that have to be included in the different regions so as to be able to make it better, because it is true that we have to keep on learning. So this is what we are doing, and right now I would just like to ask you, I would like to ask your cooperation. I know that we are working very hard, but all the contributions are important coming from public administrations, from teachers, from other experts from other countries. We are open to learn. And please make your suggestions. So once again, thank you for your cooperation. And I really hope that the dual vocational training is going to keep on being successful so that our young people can be successful in their careers and in their professional life, which will be good for our country too. Thank you.